Hi guys, uh, we're gonna pick back up on bone today. We're gonna talk about the phases of bone healing and the types of injuries that occur. Okay, so we're gonna start on slide 18. And one thing you'll notice is that the name of the phases of healing are the exact same, whether we're talking bone or whether we're talking soft tissue. So phase one is still acute inflammatory, stage two is repair, and stage three is remodeling. So going to stage one, things start happening a little bit differently, okay? We still have the rush of blood that goes to the area like we see in um, phase one of soft tissue, but we start to have other cells at play, okay? Just like we had fibroblast in class that happen with soft tissue injuries, we have osteoblast and osteoclast. Every time you see the word osteo, O-S-T-E-O, -E that means bone, okay, osteo bones, okay. Blast and clast are going to be the exact same thing. So osteoclasts are used to eat up debris, eat up dead tissue, that bone tissue that is damaged, they're going to take it away. The osteoblasts build up new bone. Okay, and they usually help for about four days. Okay, so where we see the fibroblasts and fibroclasts in stage two in soft tissue, we see osteoclast and blast in stage one. Okay, keep in mind these are fractures. Okay, so you're going to have a lot of the same inflammation signs that you have in stage one, like the redness and the swelling, because it's not just a damage to the bone, but it's also going to be damaging to the soft tissue as well. So stage two, we still have those osteoblasts and osteoclasts are working together, but what they do is they kind of start forming what we like to call a callus, okay? Kind of like a splint. It's basically like temporary bone, okay? It's trying to keep a hold of that bone as close together as possible, okay? And so that callus formation is going to last for about three weeks to three months. Okay, so again, it's kind of like that Band-Aid in soft tissue repair. It's kind of a quick fix, trying to hold things together while your body can slowly start healing itself again. In stage three, ooh, in stage three in the remodeling, okay, or the, yeah, the remodeling, the callus starts being taken away and reabsorbed by your body, and it is reuniting that fracture site, okay? So those two bones are now healthy and grow back together, okay? So whereas when we see soft tissue injuries, it's replaced by a, a collagen fiber that's kind of a substitute, the bone will regrow, okay? So during that remodeling phase, those bones start to um, reunite, all right? It's, it's filling in the holes. Okay, we do have something that people can get called a non-union fracture. Okay, a non-union fracture is a fracture that never heals. And that could be from lack of nutrition, not taking care of it, um, but the fracture site does not heal. Okay, um, we see in the bottom it says weight-bearing joint. Okay, and what any weight-bearing joint is when you're walking, is it bearing your weight? Is it causing the pressure? So like your ankles and your knees, okay? Every time you take a step, they, they feel that weight, all right? So any injury to those areas are gonna take longer to heal because they're constantly being used. Okay. All right, we have the different types of injuries, okay? So we're gonna go through these. Keep in mind, if it is a bone injury, we're talking fractures, okay? Fractures, fractures, fractures. The first one that we have is a dislocation, okay? A dislocation occurs in any joint, okay? And as a reminder, a joint is anywhere two bones are connecting, okay? Anywhere, okay? The picture shows a hip, okay? And your hip should be a nice ball and socket joint, okay? That diarthrodial ball and socket joint. And if you can see that picture on the top, you can see that it, there's an open gap right here because that ball is out of the socket. Okay, a dislocation occurs when a force pulls that joint out of socket and it does not go in without somebody else having to help it in, okay? Sometimes a person can put it back in, sometimes they have to go to the ER and have them, um, have them put it back in. 
a lot of things that happen here is there's a lot of nerves and a lot of muscles that run over joints and when that that ball gets put back in the socket it can pinch on those nerves and those muscles because they are uh, in the way now and that can cause problems uh, that require surgery okay the next one that we have is subluxation these uh, dislocations and subluxa subluxations go together okay a subluxation is the exact same thing except for it goes back in on its own okay we see this a lot um, people say they were they were on the ground and then they went to get up it slid back in okay same process that joint has been dislocated but it comes in on its own okay whether from getting up to move or maybe it wasn't out quite all the way and it's just slid back in okay if um, you see chronic dislocations Chronic means multiple. It's happened several times for a long time. Anytime you have somebody that has multiple dislocations, the chances of them getting a subluxation is very great. All right, here's a vulsion again. We just talked about this yesterday with soft tissue. Same thing. A ligament or a tendon pops off and a piece of the bone goes with it. Okay, so we have an, an injury to a ligament or an injury to a tendon, and then it pops off a piece of that bone as well. The next fracture that we have is, is a stress fracture, okay? Stress fractures we see in overuse, okay? So we see these in cross-country runners, maybe some gymnasts, um, because they are constantly putting stress on the bones, okay? So you can see this little stress fracture here on the shin, okay? This is a fracture that does not show up overnight, okay? It's from repeated, repeated, repeated use. Okay, um, like I said, we see this more in our overuse, our long-term runners, and that kind of stuff, all right? <clears throat> the next one that we have is a spiral fracture, okay? A spiral fracture is, um, it kind of has like a candy, a candy cane stripe to it, okay? It's from torsion, and torsion is rotation, okay? So we see sometimes people who, like in football, if people are tackled on their legs and they have to rotate, all right, and they're trying to rotate out of it, this is where this fracture can occur, all right? Most of the time you're gonna see these in long bones or in your fingers, okay? If you're trying to catch, if you're trying to catch that pass, it can, um, it can do the same thing. The next one that we have is a longitudinal fracture, okay? This picture is just showing that it goes parallel to the length of the bone. It's not, in real life, you're not missing a chunk of the bone. Okay, more most often. Okay, um, but you are going to it's going to split right oh, down the middle. It might not go the whole length of the bone. It might just go a little bit, but it's still parallel to that um, to that uh, bone. Okay, and it's usually caused from impact, so falling. Okay, or something hitting it, something striking the the bone. The next one that we have is not very common. It's a compression fracture. Okay, and this is talking about our vertebrae. Okay, so you can see the picture down here. It's showing the vertebrae, okay? Usually this is going to occur when there's an impact with the ground, okay? Um, falling, uh, we see this can sometimes in wrestling and football when they're being thrown around and, and their heads get pushed in a certain direction, okay? But these compression fractures occur in the little vertebrae, okay? They're only separated by this little thin line, uh, cartilage, and that cushion is not enough sometimes to overcome that force. Our next one that we have is oblique. Okay, an oblique fracture is just a diagonal line. Okay, um, so again, this can occur from a great force, from falling on it, from um, a little bit of rotation. Okay, um, but no, it is a diagonal line. We do see this a little bit more. It's a little bit more common. Um, but keep in mind that if it is a weight-bearing joint, uh, like the lower leg, our hips, okay, it's going to take a longer uh, time to heal. Uh, my favorite one is the comminuted, okay? Comminuted is a fracture that has occurred into three or more pieces, okay? So if you can see the picture here, we've got a piece here, we've got a piece here, a piece here, and a piece here, okay? And usually this is from a direct blow, okay? So um, a baseball player that gets hit with a bat, okay, or a football player that takes a helmet to the shin or the arm, okay, because it's so strong, it just kind of shatters everything in there, okay, and these definitely take longer to heal and will require surgery, 
because they'll have to go back in and put pins and plates all over those bones and screw them back together instead of your body just kind of healing it naturally in a cast. Next we have green stick. All right, a green stick fracture only occurs in adolescence. It only occurs in children because just like when we're going from 270 to 206 bones, those bones are still squishy is not the right word, but it's still a little movable, okay? They're not quite as hard as they should be. And so with the green stick fracture, it actually starts to bow, all right? You can see how this, these are, um, looks like bones in the forearm, okay? And they are supposed to be straight. They're supposed to be up and down, okay? But both of them, you can see, have that movement to them, all right? And you can see the fracture line there, okay? So it's kind of, they, it's got its name from like a twig, okay? And how you can, you can bend that twig and then finally, once it's gone too far, it'll break. Again, only occurs in children. A transverse fracture is just like the transverse plane. It splits and it has a top side and a bottom side, okay? Same thing, so it's perpendicular. It's the exact opposite of a longitudinal fracture. Next one that we have is a depressed fracture, okay? We see this in flat bones, so our skull is a big example of that um, because it is a big, uh, big wide area. The picture shows a person that was hit most likely by a ball, okay, and it just caves in that area, okay? Um, okay again, it occurs more in the flat bones. The next one that we have is a blowout fracture. Again, a lot of times this occurs from a ball to the face, okay? You can see that this eye is normal and this eye is not, okay? Um, you, unless you have some super talent that I don't know about, you cannot raise one eye and keep the other one straight, okay? That is part of the injury, okay? He had a blowout fracture occurs when the muscle, the bones on the underside of the eyeball and underneath the eyeball have been fractured okay so it's not holding that eyeball in the socket anymore it's kind of pushed in and pushed down depending on where the fracture is okay um, usually this will require plastic surgery it's a pretty big deal the next one that we have is pathological fracture okay we don't really deal with this a lot in sports medicine but we can a pathological fracture occurs from a disease inside the body Okay, um, there could be something going on with their nutrition or they could have cancer or some other type of bone disease and they get fractures because of that. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, they were running and they fell or somebody hit them. Their bones are just already weaker and so then they have these injuries because of that. And the last one that we have is epiphyseal fracture. Okay, this word should look a little familiar. Okay, uh, in the anatomy three we talked about the epiphysis which is the growth plate, and that is exactly what this is. So the picture down here at the bottom is showing that growth plate, the epiphyseal plate, same thing. Okay, epiphysis, epiphyseal plate, exactly the same. These occur in adolescence, again, because that growth plate is still open, okay? And you can see that it is fractured right here in the image. They are supposed to be connected, okay? You can see right here, these are also known as Salter-Harris fractures, okay? And we're going to talk more about those because there are uh, five different types of them, but they all have to do with the growth plate, okay? So we're going we're gonna to talk more about those later. So here's just a quick overview slide of the different of the different types of fractures. Some we talked about, some we didn't, okay? Um, I'm also going to post on the classroom another image. Okay, but these are the fractures that we will talk about in class. All right, thank you.